Okay. Um, anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes. You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any questioning. Do you understand? Yes. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you free of charge before any questioning if you want. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So just to make it clear, I didn't force you to come here. I haven't forced you to, to talk to me. Um, you decided you want to talk to me freely and voluntarily, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, before we get started, what we're going to do is, um, obviously, when this type of stuff happens, uh, we write lots of search warrants and do lots of uh, investigative work, in which I have done in this case. Okay. Um, I do have a search warrant uh, to obtain your DNA and to obtain uh, your fingerprints and stuff. Okay. okay. The DNA is just done by a swab. Basically, uh, I'll have somebody swab. She'll take pictures of you. We'll do it right here. It won't be in public, okay? And then she'll just swab uh, the inside of your mouth and get a little DNA out of it. And we're going to we'll use that, obviously, to cross-reference that stuff and prove it, okay? So she's come on over now to do that. Um, and so probably in the system. I'm sorry? In no. no, 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 no. We will use that DNA. It's not going to go in the system, okay? Let me rephrase that. We will use that DNA to eliminate the other people at the scene and that kind of stuff, okay? Um, so that's all it's going to be. It's just going to be used to eliminate you from the scene. Okay? Which we know you weren't there. Okay? Alright? Okay. So let me see if she's here. And we'll get that going real quick and then we can start talking. Alright? She's not here yet, so uh, we can get started and then we can just stop and work. She yeah, gets here. Okay. So we've had multiple conversations up to this date, and today is the 19th of uh, November, and it's about 4.45. Okay, so we know, I know that uh, through this investigation, there's been several times when you haven't been honest with me, and we need to get pretty honest with you right now, okay? I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. I understand you were probably upset and scared, and you didn't know what to say. So, I know a lot of information, and I can't give this information out, obviously for the investigation, because I do not want that to be revealed, okay? So I know, as of stuff, about all of this that's gone on, and I want you to tell me the truth, okay? I need the truth, okay? Um, so let's start out with Kate. So everything, so your marriage, did you lie about me that you married with Robert, you met him when you were 18, you guys lived in Prescott, moved to Kevin. No, that, no, that's true. Okay. So then let's talk about when you started working at Costco. Let's talk about that. Okay. How long ago was that? I was there for almost three years. And you remember when you started working there? Samples and stuff like that. And did you uh, did you actually work for Costco or work for an independent person? It was an independent okay. uh, company contracted through Costco. Okay. And uh, so this company would uh, hire you to you were hired pretty much you work full time or part time? Part time. Okay. So you're working part time, uh, doing the sampling stuff. Um, which I actually always believe when we're joking when I grab a sample at Costco. I'm like, you know, anyway, they're good at samples, but can we? People come in and lunch every day. Oh, that's awesome. So, samples. It's made in sample and lunch, yeah. yeah. So, I understand you met Donna from there. And how'd that go? Talk about when you guys first met. Um, when we first met, it started, um, he was wearing a firefighter shirt. Person, so I started talking, you know, and then he came in there all the time. I saw him all the time in Costco. What was he doing there? Shopping. Shopping? Mm -hmm. For the fire department? I don't know if he shopped for the fire department or just shopping. Costco shopping. So you guys ended up, uh, ended up becoming friendly? 
he says, and when did you meet him? So you started in November. At what point do you think you met him? So maybe early 2013? Uh, yeah. Okay. And so it started out by him coming and being sampled from you. You guys just started having a normal conversation. What kind of conversations did you guys have? Just basic stuff like, hey, where do you work at? Just like, yeah. What else? Uh, just, you know, fire department stuff, just like gets called. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm a people person and I talk to a lot of people for hours in there, believe it or not. Some people come in there just for the demo girls to to talk, you know. So just fire department stuff, you know, like what you guys call, you know, that kind of a thing. And then just kind of kept talking. What other stuff did you guys talk about? Life and uh, just. We're going back to, to him. Um, there was a uh, other party that we were going to, and it was actually other other um, was friends of fr- friends of friends. Okay, so our friends friends were having a party, oh, and they were fire department people. Oh, and uh, so I had that's what that's what started it. I mean that's what that's how I, I gave him my phone number, and I said. Um, Oh, do you know um, this couple? And, and he said, Oh, yeah, I think so. Like, are you going to that party kind of thing? And, um, and then he's like, Well, maybe I'll see you there. Like, what's your number? And I had never given out my number to like a stranger before. And I did. I instantly like felt this, like, Oh my gosh. And I had thought prior to that that I had mentioned our, you know. And I always do. That's like my that's like my protection, especially with with other you know men. Yeah. You know, like I always brought up Robert right away. So I never done that before. And I felt bad. And um, but then he called and messaged me, and I was just like, oh my gosh! Like I got myself into so I didn't answer it or respond. And he apologized. He was like, are you married? I'm so sorry. And then I put, yeah, I thought that you knew that. It's no problem. It's okay. Um, and that's where that started. So you gave me your phone And you guys never talked about you being married? Because you guys talk about a lot. But do you think? Well, this was in the beginning. Oh. Yeah. And then, we, then that's when we started, you know. Talking about life and more, you know, like a friend, a friendship, you know. Did you feel guilty about that? Um, you know, the funny thing, after I told him I was married, he was sincerely like, sorry, and I felt bad too. I was just like, oh yeah, no, no worries, it's it's okay, it's all good. Um, I didn't, I didn't feel that bad because I, I social, I talk to a lot of people, and you know, I. We're, we're open. Like, Raw was, he was pretty casual with me and my relationship with others. So, he was pretty secure. Like, he wasn't in a secure time. And how often did he come into the Costco? In quite a bit. In Victorville? Mm-hmm. Like, quite a bit, like, yeah, once a week, twice a week? Twice, three times a week, maybe. I go to Costco once in a month, and I'm like, oh, you know. So, okay. He was there, obviously, to see you. He wanted to talk to you. Um, 
So after you gave him the phone number for the first time, and he knew that you were married, how much did you guys talk after that? How, how frequently? Um, it, it wasn't a lot um, in the beginning, you know. And then we just started talking a lot more, a lot more, a lot more. Okay. You know? Okay. Now, we formed a, a relationship. Okay. Like talking in person and on the phone and stuff like that. Um, how about any uh, meetings after work? Did you ever meet with him after work? I would see him, yeah. But just for short, you know, just. So, um, a lot of times he'd come in later and then end up like walking out with me kind of thing. Okay. So. Now, <clears throat> so he would come visit you, you got to talk there, and then he'd walk you out to the car or whatever. So, um, I, at what point did it become a sexual relationship? Uh, a year, a year later. So we talked for so 2014. So this year. So before you know, that, if you um, met him in in 2014. Probably let's say. Probably talked for like. I'm, I am honestly but super bad with time Four and months. dates. Let's say, let's just round about eight months, maybe, or or six months, or something like that. Like it wasn't, um, it wasn't right away, anything like that, you know. So. She's here. Quick, we'll do this real quick, and then we'll finish. Okay. Yeah. How about this stuff to wipe her hand with me? 
Do that one over, so just relax your hands. It's up to you, because I'm going to use black powder on you, so we can either try and take your jacket off, because it's going to be on you. So it's up to you. Do you want to roll them up, please, then? Uh, yeah, if you want to roll your same thing. Okay. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Is it okay? 
Just uh, we'll do two. I'll do two.
I'll take it to the bathroom real quick and then um, we can do that one. No.
Well, we don't want to actually go into this one. Go ahead and have a seat. I'll just have to sign off. Yeah, 
where we were at. Okay. Um, so you said it was about eight months to a year, and then... Maybe six months. Maybe six months. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So that's when it starts to become a sexual relationship. Did you guys uh, have that relationship at your house, or was it at Costco, or was it at a motel? It was at our house, and, uh, and sometimes, you know, whatever. Okay. And how often did you guys meet up? Uh, a couple times a week. Okay. And so this was six months after, I'm sorry? Sometimes, not, sometimes like once a week or... Just, you know, what's happening. Just, yeah. Okay. So this was six months after you met, or... Mm -hmm. Okay. So you met in maybe early thir 2013, I'm sorry, 20, 2014 this year, right? No, it's been over a year. So oh. probably like a year and a half time. Because at the end of 2012, Right, because you met in early 2013. Okay. So mid to 2013. Okay. Now, basic uh, uh, friendship relationship, uh, sexual relationship, maybe once or twice a week. And then, um, so, I mean, and obviously this relationship goes on and on. You guys talk about all kinds of stuff, right? Um, tell me about, uh, did Rob ever suspect anything? No, Robert had uh, downed my phone. Tell me about that. And he wasn't, you know, he's like, who's, who's this dude? And, and he'd seen him out once before. He only um, met him once. So he was just like, you know, what's up? How did this, how did this go down? And um, I just kind of told him, like, Happened and um, Jonathan apologized to Robert. Talked to him, he apologized to him. And we felt bad, you know. And um, felt bad. And Rob and I just kind of kept going, you know. And Jonathan and I stopped talking. I was not in, the, in Costco probably, let's say, three months later, something like that. And, and honestly, Detective, like, I'm so bad with time, it could have been give or take or, you know, but it was it was a little while, and I hadn't seen him. When did Rob find out, and do you remember when it was, what month it was? Or about what time? So this is going to be in 20, 2013, you found out, right? June. And what happened that day? And how did you, when you found out about it? What was going on? He was going to have the next day off. We had, um, we had been out the night before, and I had kind of had too much to drink. Oh. And I, didn't, I wasn't paying attention to my phone. So we'd been out the night before, and he'd already taken the, the next day off, and he was kind of. We had, I hate talking about this, this is why I mean, I know, it's, I know, I know. Um, like Rob and I just had sex, like we had like for eight, it was kind of like a, like, okay. Um, and he'd ask me questions, you know, and I just kind of would answer them as, as he asked, but then we kind of didn't, we didn't talk about it. He didn't like, he didn't like um, to, you know, like problems, you know. Now, when he asked you these questions, did you tell the truth or did you just tell him a little bit of information? Um, a little bit, not in like detail, but I would answer his questions, you know, and I seriously, I was just like, I, I don't know how it happened, you know. Um, like I did tell you, you, know, you were 
distracted with so many things, friends and partying, and um, and we have had open relationships. You know, I kind of I threw that at him. You know, so this was prior, and parties and just kind of like that kind of of a, of a lifestyle, more more like. Now the kids weren't exposed to that firsthand. They were probably, not probably, they were exposed to me drinking, you know, like too much while I was sleeping. Just a little bit. Kind of thing. Right. Um, so. Tanya, we talked about your open relationship before, and you told me you didn't have one. Um, I was I was great, and I didn't want any of this to, to come out, you know. Did you think this would ever come out? I was, um, that's, I did driven, you know, and it's, it's shameful, it's terrible, and I'm, I'm feeling it. Right. I understand. Did you guys have open relationships such as you would meet other people at parties and stuff and have sexual encounters, or was it, oh, what? Well, And that was just kind of like a Rob and I thing we had years ago. It was this couple, and that's what started. We we never done anything like that, right? You know? and we were uh, new to Silver Lake. Robbie was in the kindergarten, and yeah, we met this kooky couple. I mean, yeah, the chick for sure, but a woman, and uh, but I am a people person. So so is Robert, and um, uh, that was just a crazy experience with her and her husband. What are their names? Uh, Nicole and Dill. Oh. Did you hear about? Have you heard about them? No. Well, they lived out there, so Robbie was in kindergarten. He's oh. eleven now. So. Oh. Okay. But that's where the door opened, and Robert was, um, I, I hate to talk about him, Ellie, you know, because I don't want to dishonor him. I feel like this is such a dishonor to him. But... He was a man. Yeah, so he was, he was all about it, you know, to the end of the, like, whatever we had to do. And this went on, and, uh, uh my gosh, I've never had such troubles, you know. And and I told Robert, like, we should not get in too deep with these two of them. Well, they're end up they're divorced now. But uh, just kind of one of those things. So it just kind of turned into like it's just sexual for that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. But then like I don't be like that kind of stuff online. Just pretty much with any. That was kind of just then. It was just uh, kind of like, oh, bring this cool with it. You know? So. Did you know him have any other relationships, like outside of your marriage, without me knowing? No, she was one that out, uh, you know. She was the only one that I knew. That's what I was wondering, too, if there was. There. And I was honest with you, I didn't, I don't know of any other relationships like that. Okay. Um, so, did you think it would be okay, I mean, with Rob, if, if you were seeing Jonathan, because, you know, you guys kind of had that open relationship, or did you feel... I guess that's how I justified it, you know, it's kind of like, I was just feeling like my own thing, and he was so busy, and he was a, um, just worker, and people pleaser and party young and not wanting anything to be missed even though by by the end, you know, I, I just talked to him, we have to kind of refocus some things and and uh, he wasn't he wasn't um, now Robert would have done anything, you know, as far as in the moment.
Did you not want to tell him about the hurt days because you didn't want him to realize that you miss Rob? You miss your old way of life? Yes? Yeah. And I would tell him I, I tell him I miss Rob a lot. What did he say? He'd say, yeah, you know, of course you do. You spent so much years with him. And, um, I didn't even think about this. Like, it's like every day just is something different. Like, just getting, just trying to get by. And I feel like we've been doing better. We have the kids and I. The kids and I. This is so crazy. How could how could Rob be gone? How could Rob be gone? And then and then we all just kind of you know. I got it. He's over your house. He's hanging out. He goes to the movies, goes to lunch. Kind of falling into that relationship role. So I need to get some clarification with a few things. Back before Rob got murdered, okay. But before we talk, I want I want to let you know that you have to be totally honest with me. Okay. This is so freaking serious. I can't tell you how serious this is. Okay. I got you. I'm and with you. If you're lying to me, it's going to be very difficult for you. Okay. Okay. Before the marriage, or before the before the death of Robert, you guys have had conversations multiple, seven thousand three hundred thirty-three conversations. April 15th, when you got the burn phone. Got the burn phone on April 15th. From April 15th to September 1st, there were 7,333 phone calls, text messages. I've done my homework. Okay. You guys have had to have some sort of conversation discussing your unhappiness in your marriage and your divorce or possible divorce and then. At what point did Jonathan say that he could probably take care of it for you? He never said he could take care of it. No. It was like, no, like we could, we could be together, you know, and, oh, and live for God. So he said we could be together and live for God? What did, what did you think about that? I just kind of lived, you know, um, I thought... I would think about it, but it was like I was living like two lives, you know, so. So a life with Robert and then a life with Jonathan. In a way, yeah. And whenever he would talk to you. I would go along, you know, we. I'm sorry, what? We talk about things, you know. together with the kids, talk about the kids, raising the kids, we talked about that a lot. How badly it were, you know, things were being done, you know. Like, so you're saying you were a bad parent and Rob was a bad parent? Because he the obviously said, knows, he's 26 years old and he, uh, you know what I mean? He never, he never, um,
I'd say there's a lot of, you know, need for, for God in our life. That was his way in. He started to make you feel guilty about the life you were living, about not living for God. He gets his way into your mind and your heart. And then he makes you start believing this stuff about you, which probably wasn't true. Do you remember any, do you remember a specific date that poor Bob was murdered that he told you that Jonathan said I could we could be together and live for God? Do I remember a date? Yeah, like maybe how like a week before in a month before all the time? More than yeah, more than um, we talked about, you know, living for God. Mm-hmm. More. I'll say maybe a month or two, maybe three. Did you know that he had planned to murder your husband? No. No. You didn't know that? No, I did not know that he planned on murdering Robert. Because he did. I, I can't. After the murder, has he talked to you about it and told you that he did it? No, he never said. Never ever? He never said I killed Robert. Do you know that he has two firearms that are the same caliber as the one that killed Robert? Same caliber? Mm-hmm. What's that? It's the same size bullet. Same as that bullet. Start feeling, you know, so 
you know, questioning and it's like, oh, you know. I can tell you that. So, and we've gone and we have discussed it a lot, you know, kind of like what, what to, you know, go over and say. Why would you discuss that? About the, about the, um, about what to go over, what to say to me. Why would you guys have to discuss that? It's just an affair. Well, no, to take off, to take off, not to, you know, um, not to, not for the, not for the affair to be about. That, that's just kind of like, um, you know, we've never had an affair. Nope. Um, we have a great marriage, perfect, everything perfect. And then um, we have talked about, um, you know, just the lifestyle. conversations Jonathan's had with you about not talking to me and not telling me the truth, that was to conceal him committing the murder. That's all it was. It wasn't about the affair. It was about him. I felt like it was about the affair. Like I felt like it's so amplified because Matt was murdered and I it's never I it, but I mean it wasn't about the affair. He's trying to tell you all this information and feed you all this this bullshit because he didn't want it to be revealed that he was having an affair with you because he knows that we are going to come look at him, look for him and talk to him. You know what I mean? That's what this all is about. All these conversations, this hundred conversations you guys have had, you know, the last. I'm afraid that that our affair would be discovered.
was relating to murder, not an affair. You know what I mean? Let's talk about um, last um, last week when we met. You leave here. Mm-hmm. We talked to him on the phone with your sister in the car. Mm-hmm. Still a little bit, you're not blaming your sister not a whole lot, I understand. Um, and then there was another conversation you had with him after you and I spoke and you called him and said, Hey, we're good. I'll call you in a little bit. Remember that? I mean, I don't know about the call you in a little bit. Um, what that part was about, but um, I just felt like uh, I was just worried about about, uh, about phone records. I thought if you were going to have this, I seriously thought we were being arrested for an affair. And I know that sounds retarded, but yeah. it's like, well, what do they what do they have really besides phone records? Okay, well, you know, I would go back and forth and back and forth, but then I, 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 I just felt so, I felt, I felt guilty. For, for the affair and Rob being gone, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then hearing it out loud doesn't even. I'm sorry. Hearing it out loud it doesn't even. So the target, right? Yeah. Doesn't make um, sense. Also, you guys had a conversation about me, too. Remember the conversation? Well, lots of them. I mean, lots of them out there almost every conversation you guys have. Right? Um, yeah, I didn't realize that he, I mean, he, like, I never had said your first name or, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't believe. And uh, I do, he looked in, you know, kind of just checking you out.
husband is killed, and I'm worried about covering up an affair. There's bigger things than having an affair. That's murder, right? I mean, at that point in time, I'd be like, here's all my cards. I'm not doing anything wrong, except having an affair. You should go look at that little book. That's what I would have said. My mind is not thought that big like that. Yeah, I mean, it hasn't. It honestly hasn't. It's like. I think all bets are off. Once somebody gets killed, murdered, shot, no more, not coming back. Kids with no father. Fuck the affair. Who cares? You know what I mean? Yeah. I would have been like, I need to talk to you. I got to tell you about this affair. I didn't do anything wrong, except having an affair. There were a couple of days talking. where I had it so heavy on my heart. Just. But you never said anything. I asked you dozens of times. Do you have any information for me? Do you have anything else you'd like to tell me? I know, I'm thinking outside of my affair. And oh no, I'm thinking about, tell me anything. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it, weighed, it was weighing heavy on me a couple times, and I, uh, I did want to talk to you. But you didn't, though. I didn't. How do you expect somebody to diligently be working to solve the murder of your husband? Because I, I didn't suspect Jonathan. But you told me earlier that you did at some point. Yeah, but I, it wasn't like... Uh, In the beginning, this is coming down to to these um, these photos and some of the things that have been said recently. What? Or, what have been said recently? Um, just you know, it could be me on the video. It could um, just discussion like that in the past, probably. to me is very suspicious for you to quickly call him on your burner phone after we get off the phone, like seconds after we get off the phone. Call me on the station phone. And then, you hear a clicking noise, thinking that we're listening to your call, it turns out it's from the station. You're apparently going to make a clicking noise when you talk on the phone. That's very suspicious. 
more than just trying to get someone fair. That's it. To me, that's suspicious until, I mean, every detective arrives. Yeah, well, I could do it. That would be suspicious. I mean, but just... That's how I felt. I seriously felt like, yeah, I felt like this is, this is a very huge weight, but yet I continued. There's really no explanation for my behavior as far as that goes. Like, I, now that I see it like this, it's almost like talking and, and, uh, and kind of continuing. looks really bad because you have an affair, yeah. you have a motivator for money, right? This looks terrible. You to murder, continue an affair, and people lying to conceal the affair, and to conceal the murder. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that saying, I 
the motorcycle. He's lied about talking to Robert three other times before the murder. He lied about murdering Robert, driving over there to Tashkeen, meeting a murder. He, he, he talked to Robert three other times. Oh, yeah. Since he'll, he'll repent for the sins he's committed. He thinks it's going to be okay. No. It's not okay. You can't just go out and defend a murderer and just think that you're doing God's work. You know, think that I'm doing the, the work of God because he wants me to save her from her sins. And then think it's okay. He's going to want 
what you tell them. But what I'm wondering is what it's going to tell me about you. I know. Okay. Why would you tell him where Robert worked at? I, 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 um, that was a long time ago. Like how long? Like probably a long time ago. Half of a year ago or so. Why specifically would you tell them that there's a building in Tehachapi? We talked about Tehachapi and he... It's right up the freeway. He's asked me. He's asked you? Why do you think he asked you? I don't know, like it was in conversation, like literally. In conversation. Okay. Of where Robert works and just kind of like... You know why he was doing that? Because he was planning and preparing. So he could be with you forever. He's planning this out. He was making this plan up in his head. He had a lot of pre-planning done. Like driving up there, checking it out. Living there on his motorcycle. Checks it out, find out how much fuel he needs to make it there and back. Force points are out where he's going to stop at. This is a plan. He had a master plan. So that's why he talks about it. And that's why he had questions for you. What is this out? But I'm wondering why would you why would you even tell him? I mean, it's your husband's place of business. Why would you specifically tell him that it's a business right on the freeway in Cash Feet? That's what he works at. I don't I don't know why you tell him that. It was in conversation. I don't know. You know what? I think if you would have never told him that, he would have never been able to find it. Because it's not on the map. You can't Google it and find it. That's right. He would have never ever known where that BNSF shop was at, if you would have told him. He would have not known where to go. You know what I mean? Tell me, why would you give that information to him? Trying to think of probably been a conversation. Did you guys have any specific conversations before the murder, before the day of the murder, a couple of days before about him maybe going on a ride on a motorcycle? I think 
passing that kind of thing to me. Um, and uh, uh, so living, living life, uh, God has a purpose, and through, through this, um, God's had a plan for all of our lives. I don't think that in this moment the plan was the uh, was the whole word about cutting the tree. Uh, how old is she? She was fourteen. She was fifteen, I believe. Mm-hmm. What did she want? Huh? What did she want right now? She wanted a laptop. Give me a second. Uh, Detective Meyer, during uh, that interview, you left uh, multiple times some dead spots in the recording. What were you doing at that time? Um, There were several moments uh, where I left the room uh, basically to speak with other investigators who had been working with me on the case. There was a room uh, pretty close to the room that I was interviewing Sabrina in, and they could watch a live feed of what was going on. Um, So I would go meet with them really quickly to find out if there's anything else that we needed to touch bases on. That point, um, through the investigation, I was trying to give her an opportunity to give me some more information and, and uh, provide some truth. And then at the end of People's 80, uh, you moved Miss Lamone to another location? Yes, at the very end of that uh, portion of the interview, uh, at that point, uh, Jonathan Hearn was present at headquarters, so I moved uh, Miss Lamone to a separate room we have uh, that has a table, a couch, and stuff uh, while we could speak with uh, Mr. Hearn. Uh, you mentioned uh, towards the end of People's 80, you kept saying, I wonder what Jonathan's going to say. Um, did you receive any information from Jonathan Hearn that day? No, we did not. At that point, he decided he did not want to talk to the investigators. Okay. Uh, you said that you moved Miss Lamone to another room? Yes, sir. That room, uh, does it have the same capabilities of audio and visual recording? That room does not. It's uh, more of a soft room. Uh, like I said, there's a couch in there, uh, a table, some chairs. And that room does not have the capabilities uh, with a video or audio recording. Okay. Uh, did, was a 
further continuation of the interview with Ms. Lamone, uh, did it occur at that same location later on after uh, your contact with Mr. Hearn? Yes, after we had a chance to speak with Mr. Hearn briefly, we then moved uh, Sabrina back into the interview room one uh, to finish the interview.
looking for our material. second, everything is cool, you're bending down, getting this meter in the water, next second you're fighting for your life, fighting for your life, this guy's going to fucking kill you. He was struggling. Yeah, they're fighting with a gun, and then pow, and then goes up. And then what are you thinking? You start thinking about your life, about your life, your kids, and all this shit.
hours they're gone, if they work, we do 12-hour shift, maybe we can come over, we can hang out, and he's thinking, today's the day. I'm going to take that drive. And I'm going to go take care of business so I can be with her. I can have her and her family. Okay. Is that the same for the kids? Or what? Because they want their dad. And he was a good dad. Find out what 
that place in. I couldn't even find it when they sent us there. That's my fault. I, uh... Absolutely. What's it look like to me? No, Let me tell you what it looked like to a jury. This is all I do. It's all I've been doing for many years. I'm going to tell you what a jury's going to think. The same thing I am right now and the same thing you are. We've got some problems. You need to tell me why you're not an accomplice to this murder. Why am I not? Yeah. Because I didn't even want Robert dead. I would never want him dead. Ever. Yes, you did. You guys have been talking for weeks and weeks about how this is God's will. That you guys get together and marry. It's all God's Robert will. Did. It's almost every conversation of every day about how uh, killing your husband and you, get, you two getting together is God's will. That's Shiva. Didn't we talk about that? They had said... Um, well, tell me that story. Tell I, me the story I don't know. about Shiva. I don't know that. I don't know it. You don't know that story? He says that's our that's our that's our life, and you went yes. Well, whatever I read, like I, uh, you, you don't remember? No, I don't remember. He takes another man's wife that has his husband murdered, had her husband murdered, killed. There's a whole other man here. It sounds to me like the woman fell in love with another man and had her husband killed. I would never want Robert killed ever. Why did you tell him where Robert's at? I was going to see him and I would tell him when Robert was working and stuff. And Why did you feel worried about the DNA stuff he found? I thought that was good. The no, DNA. no, that's not what the conversations are. No. Well, the DNA was no, a good no, thing. Panic. Okay. No. I can read a few of them to you. That's not. So you talk about how good it is after you figure out we're probably listening to you. Before now, it's all panic, which is exactly why we told you that. Okay? I just didn't want to be publicized. No, you, you two have already, you, both of you have already told people about this affair. Why keep it from us? We knew about it from the minute. He's got, five, he's got 500 of your phone calls on his thing every day. You think we're not going to know? I thought that... Thank you. 
Joseph came in and we had a John. How come you gave me two different John's names? Because that was John. Those were the John's that brought that good. Why would you just tell me then? I mean, you had to know that shit's hit the fan. Yeah, I felt like, oh, John, okay. Um, Why would you tell me? It's not just about an affair. Your husband was murdered. That's more important than the spring of affair you ever had. You know what I mean? Here's another thing. I can tell you, I don't care where the hell I was at. Day, night, whatever. If my wife was murdered, I would be standing at that fucking scene, finding out why and what. Give me some answers. And he didn't even come out there. He told us that, that we weren't allowed to. I don't, I don't care if they told me I couldn't go out there. I would be there, standing there, saying, uh, I'm tell me something. You didn't. I don't care if they told me I couldn't. You're going to tell me that I can't drive a fucking cash fee. I'm, it's a free world. I'm going to go where I want to go. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to talk to whoever to find out what's going on. That's suspicious to me, too. I know you're having an affair. You're living too. Oh, I wanted to. Go. I wanted to come up. But... You're living two different lives and stuff, like you said. I said it was all ripped off, and they won't let anybody know. Okay. I was sure of it. And get my with that crazy. I don't. What the hell happened to my life? God has a purpose. He sees all. He does. He knows all. He does. He has a purpose for us in our marriage. He even knew that Rob was going to get killed. When he told you that's him in the video, why would you not burn his phone up to tell you that I found out who killed my husband? I mean, you said it looked like him. Because your relationship with Jonathan is more important than your husband was. No. You should have been tearing his phone up. Jonathan just told me that's him in the video. Okay? Why didn't we get that call? I asked him, I said, what the way? Well, you don't need to ask him anything. Tell me why you didn't call us. Because he said it could have been planned. Like it could no, have been. there's no could have. I, okay? That, that's not, it's a glass of water. It's not, a, it's not a house. It's not a car. I can't tell you that, well, that could be a chair. It's a glass of water. That could be me in the video. What do you mean, it could be you? It either is or is not. And if he's in the video, that's the video of the suspect. We all know that. You know that, don't you? That guy in that video walked into the place where your husband was and killed him and then ran off. And he tells you that could be me in the video. What did you think? I'm more than confused here, Korea. I'm really telling you, I think you're flat in the middle of this murder. I think he's such a husband, I've had him killed by Jonathan, so you two can be together. Yeah. And I can tell you, that's not going to happen, ever. Yeah. Okay? You need to get that through your head now. You are not going to be together. He's going to end up going to prison for the rest of his life. And I've got some serious doubts about you. Okay? There's no reason to tell your boyfriend exactly where your husband is working. Absolutely none. Right down to the building. What's the purpose? There can only be one. Tell me another one. I'm waiting. Tell me why you would tell him exactly where Rob's at. You can't find that place by accident. We knew somebody told him. I'll be honest with you, from day one, when he told me about I wasn't there to murder him. He came back and told me. So we got a problem. It's a long time of the day for somebody to get burglarized. And burglars don't just shoot people for no reason. Okay? Something else went on. It was all fishy looking. It was real fishy to me. I said, somebody has got a relationship. We better stop looking at it. I was a three or four days after the murder before we knew anything. 
Okay? Because this whole thing stuck to me from, from day one. Somebody told him, somebody told somebody where that guy went at. You can't just find him. There's not anything to take in that place anyway. All those businesses next door have got tons of stuff that you could sell. Not that place. Tools. That's it. Train repair craft. You can't sell that. He told you that could be me in the video. That should have been the end of it right there. And then I told you that that was our suspect, and you didn't say anything. You know what I mean? I said, This is our suspect. No, oh, okay. Gigs up. That's Jonathan Hearn. You didn't tell me anything. I should have told you that. You should. The black helmet. I, I didn't. He never told you see. it was him in the video, Sabrina. You already knew it. Okay. He didn't tell you that. You already knew it. You know, Dave Willis, him. You know how he walks. That was my brother in that video. I peg him in a minute. You know. And when we, when we put the picture of John on his bike down in front of you, you don't need to sit and stare at it for 15 minutes. You knew exactly who it was. And you should have said it. Jonathan, as Jonathan bite. Everybody else did. Why couldn't you say it? You knew it was him, you knew it was him on his bike. You know exactly where the picture's taken. Where it's taken? Yeah, it's taken about 300 feet from where your husband's killed. He's leaving right after he kills him. Okay? He told you he did this and he told you because you guys wanted to be that he wants to be with you. You need to tell us now. If not, all we're left to think with. Mr. Smith, stop the uh, A1A on page 18. We'll take our afternoon recess there. 15 minutes. Remember not to form or express any opinion or discuss the case. Mr. Smith, if you'd like to continue. We'll be left off with the A1, page 18. Is that you set this whole thing up. If he went and did something stupid, okay, you need to tell us now. Well, you have it right there. I don't have it. I want it out of your mouth because we've not got any truth out of your mouth. And if I don't start well, getting something out of you, I'm left to believe exactly what I really believe. Somebody told him where Rob was, exactly where Rob was, he were going to kill him. And you know, if we've been listening to what you guys have been talking about for weeks and weeks, what we've done. Okay? Yeah, I understand. And you come down here, and he purposely tells you we haven't got nothing, just to see what you'll say. And you burn up the phone. They ain't got nothing. Okay? We're okay. They ain't got nothing. What's it sound like? What will it sound like? Well, he did say that yesterday. I don't know. At what point did he tell you he shot Rob? And don't tell me he did. I know better. He said that was him yesterday. No. 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 I ain't gonna cut it. Hey. He never said he shot. You think him. about six or seven old ladies sitting on that jury, and he's, this guy says that's, that's me in the video. Huh? And they said, what happened? I don't know. She didn't come. She, she still, it took us, you know, 15 minutes in her interview to get her to say that. She didn't call us. Okay? And the prosecutor says, folks, that's how much she cares about the husband. Okay? Her new boyfriend killed him, and she don't even care. And what will your kids think when they find out? And the whole world is going to find out in the next three days because all this paperwork goes public. Not a thing we do about it. Okay? All kinds of stuff. Phone calls, everything. You want, to, you want people hearing some of that stuff without explaining some of this stuff to us? No. Tell me when he told you he killed your husband because he did and he told you. Okay? Or you knew it already. If he didn't tell you, you knew it already. And you knew it before he did it. I didn't know. Then how did he find out where your husband is to go kill him? My fault. Yes, absolutely. You're absolutely right. Yes. When he asked about where your husband is, what do you think he's asking for? 
go buy my milkshake, say hi, I'm doing your wife. But what do you think he's going to do? When did he tell you? You're not going to get another shot at this, I'm telling you. We're going to leave here in a minute, and we're going to call you again. You'll want to, but your attorney won't let you, and it's too late. I won't talk to you even late. We're done. We will take what we have and go with it. You wouldn't be here if we didn't have enough. Okay. Brenda, if you did something, and you can't, you don't want to tell us that you've got to now. You understand? I understand. If you didn't, if, if you never intended for him to go do this, and he went and did it, and you didn't plan this, and you had pain, and you get scared because he's done it, you're, you think you're wrapped up. I can understand that. I've had a lot of people in these situations, a lot, a bunch of them. Little girls that drive people, little gangsters to all, but I didn't know they were going to go in here and kill people. It happens, okay? Yeah, and it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're in the middle of this plot of it, planned it, or anything else. He may have went off and done something stupid on his own, but don't tell me you didn't know, because we know we did. This has been nothing but cover up. Oh my God, I hope they don't. God wants it to be there. I hope the DNA doesn't, okay? That's got nothing to do with this affair. What the DNA got to do with you two being together? And how are we going to find out that you two are right if all we have is his DNA? Okay? Yeah. Hey? His DNA at the scene means only one thing. That's a suspect. Yeah. I understand that. Did you plan to kill Brock? No. Oh my gosh, no. When did Jonathan tell you to get it? Don't tell me yesterday again. He never told, he never yes, he came did. out and yes, said. He did. He, yes, he did. You guys are doing nothing but hiding this thing the whole time. Yes, he did. No. Yeah. Well, what are you trying to hide? I know, I, okay, I know it, it doesn't look good. No. There's a difference between doesn't look good and absolutely is not good. This is absolutely not good. I understand that. Hey. I understand that. He never told me that he was going up there that day. I had told him more to Robert. Why? We're still back to that one, and I'm still sitting here waiting for, for a reason why he would tell Jonathan where your husband is. Are you going to come up with some answer between now and, and trial time? They're going to see each other. So I can talk to him. That's why. why. That's why. Uh -huh. That what? What's he gonna say? I gotta know. Yeah. I'm sending my boyfriend to talk to my husband. No, I never. No, he never said he. Was what going did you to think he was gonna do if he's asking about where Rob's at? He didn't ask that day. Why did you tell him? I had told him like prior conversations. Why? He'd asked, what? I believe, uh, about, about to have to be, like, we, we just talked about, like, what Rob did, and just talked. You didn't know what Rob did? Yeah, but as a, as a, to have to be as a responder. Okay, so why, why is it important for, for anybody in the world, really, to know exactly what Rob did? Well, from your, now on the other side, I, Shouldn't have. I shouldn't have. When you told him exactly where Rob was at, and Rob ends up getting killed, did you put two and two together at all? Not at first. I, I, I was in shock. I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe what I heard. I couldn't believe that it happened. I didn't. I didn't know what happened. I didn't know why. You you, you didn't figure out. Gee, I just told Jonathan, who wants to be with me forever, does not want me to be with my husband. Come back and yeah. Exactly where my husband's at, and now my husband gets killed in the middle of a sunny afternoon in broad daylight. No, I didn't. That, that I didn't, didn't know on you? I didn't think of him. No, I didn't. I thought, I, I couldn't believe Rob was gone, and I thought about our, I thought about our affair. And I felt, I couldn't. 
kind of describe how I felt. Okay, t tell me anybody else in the world that have a reason besides John to kill your husband. Anybody. Has he got money? Has he had the Russian mafia? Has he beat up people? Has he had the alleged rapist or anything? Anything at all. So who, who has the only motive that you know of to kill your husband? It's the only thing I thought it was. Um... What did Jonathan have to gain if he killed Rob? What surprise? You. Correct? And he has you all to himself. Is that correct? Yeah. And he gets killed and after you tell him where he's at. And you don't put it, put it together. I don't think you're that dumb, Sabrina. I really don't. No one's going to. They were back to you have him killed. Because if Jonathan, if you don't suspect it, and at some point Jonathan's got to tell him, okay, did, did you ask him, hey Jonathan, don't you think it's odd that after I tell you where he's at, somebody goes over there and tells him for no apparent reason? I did say. And? Okay. And? Did what were the answers? What did he say? Oh no, I didn't? I just said that's crazy. And you believe him? I'd have to stay with him, you did. But make future plans. Start talking about how you're going to raise Rob's children, children with him. Take up the handguns he owns. How many? Uh, I just I just knew that he had one gun. Probably about a 45 he owned, 45 caliber. I didn't know what kind it was. And he's got one and it's missing. So why you find it? I wonder where that's at. I think that was just pretty hunting. The only thing worse than keeping the murder weapon. Is getting rid of it when it's registered to you. Not being able to tell us where it's at. Oops, I lost it. Oop, I don't know where it's at. Oh, I forgot where I put it. That's what he said. You know what I mean? You know how stupid that sounds? But seriously, that's almost as believable as I told him exactly where he was at, and he ended up dead in that spot, and I don't think this guy killed him. Did you tell anybody else exactly where Rob was at that day? Well, yeah, I mean, being in Tehachapi, you know. I didn't tell Jonathan, like, directions that day. It was prior, like we talked about. Um, and How did you find him? Months. It was months. Uh, I'd say probably months prior. And I, I want to remember how exactly that conversation went. So how did Jonathan know he was there that day? I, I had told him. You told him Jonathan's in Hatchby. No, Robert is in Hatchby. Robert, sorry. Robert's in Hatchby, working. And that day he gets murdered. And you don't figure that out. I had talked to Jonathan. And you don't bother to tell him or anyone else. By the way, the day my husband is murdered, I told my boyfriend where he was. What's it sound like? What's it going to sound I like, Sabrina? That. I can go on and on with this thing, and that's going to happen at the trial. But I'm not going on much longer. The rest of this will be one year later, and probably not one we should have ever. Okay. If you have any part of this thing, and we all think you did, you wouldn't be here. You need to start figuring out how to convince us that you did it now. I told you, if he did something stupid, and you didn't know he did it, and you had nothing to do with planning it. Okay? And he says, sorry, honey, I had to do this for us to be together. Whatever he did, whatever he told you, you need to tell us now. Okay? If you're going to stick to this, I, yesterday he finally told me he killed my husband. Basically. Well, these conversations have been the same. You know, since no, they haven't. 
No, they're, they change drastically all, all the time. The only major theme is God wants you two to be together according to Him. And God sees everything and knows everything. What did God see the day Rob got killed? Same thing we saw. His motorcycle jumped his motorcycle leaving the crime scene. Okay? I mean, who does he think he's fooling? Who are you guys fooling you? I don't get it. He tells you that you and Kim are David and Bathsheba's story, and you agree? I didn't, I didn't. You'll hear that again, trust me. That one was almost unbelievable for me, because that's exactly what happened. Exactly. Know that for us to be together, one spouse has got to be out of the picture permanently. Now, why divorce was an option, I don't, I don't know. Uh, divorce would have been an option for me, not murder. Well, then why did it get to this? Okay. Was it not an option and that didn't go over well with Jonathan? That's what it sounds like. I've had a few of those. See, if you won't divorce him, I'll get rid of him for you. Yeah. No? I think yes. I understand. You won't divorce him, and Jonathan's got to go to plan B. Doesn't he? I mean, Jonathan's got to go worry that, and he got that out of you. And frankly, I could sit here for two or three hours, and I don't think you'd ever explain that one. There's only one explanation for that one. Just exactly what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? Why everybody else outside is doing really thinking? Exactly what you're doing. And you're not going to get exactly what you guys plan to do. It's still your husband. Shot him straight in the face. Okay? So you tell me what Rob done to deserve that. Tell me what Rob's children done to have their dad taken away by your boyfriend. Tell me. What did they do? And who suffers? Huh? You don't. Know? They do. Their whole life. They want their dad back. And who took them? And who helped them take it? What are they going to think? Trust me, Sabrina, I've never talked to anybody yet that thought they wouldn't get away with it. Or you wouldn't do it. Everybody does. It's all well planned. All of it. Yeah. All of the interviews are rehearsed on the phone with him. Sam would listen to him. They were impressive. I'm going to tell you exactly what to say and not say. And we're going to Google DNA and Google all this stuff to make sure that we're not giving them enough information to find out. Okay? But that's stuff we already knew. Now before this thing comes to an end, I'll ask you one more time. Did Jonathan tell you he killed your husband? He never told me. Did he fire it just all the led up to all the all the things that he said? Decision needs to be made right now. 
Um, you requested this. You want to talk to Randall. Um, we're four hours into this, and you haven't said anything different to him than what he told me. Um, if you have something you need to say, right now's the time, because otherwise I'm not ready to cut this off. Um, Thank you guys. I mean, you think what? Everything that has been said has been evidence that it's clear. And it's my fault for telling Jonathan where Robert was that day. And most, it most certainly is. It is. It is your fault. children are going to have to live with for the rest of their lives. No matter what happens now, Lord Robbie's going to know that Jonathan killed his dad. I told you, I told you down there in Boron, I care less about you. I care about your kids. They didn't ask for this. You're a grown woman and you made decisions. And why you would tell the man, I think he's not, he's not a man, he's a coward. He, he's, he's a scumbag. Um, why you would tell the guy that you're, you're sharing a bed with where your husband works beyond me. Um, if you don't have anything for us, I think we need to get you to jail. I'll take that as a, yes, I do not have anything to tell you. Is that, is that pretty fair? I said everything. That the, we you, have. Okay, yeah, you, you told him the same thing that you told me, only I wasn't patient for four hours. I was kind of trying to move it along after about an hour of listening to you tell me that. He's a lot nicer than me, a lot more patient. So what I need you to do is I need you to stand up and turn around. Obviously, since you were already brought down here once before, you were told what you were in the rest for, correct? Yes. For conspiracy to commit murder, accessory to murder?
you out the leading edge, you just sign one of those uh, cards. We didn't have you sign one of those cards with your fingerprints on, so the lady's coming over here so you can sign those. Detective if Jonathan did it, and you guys have all the evidence. Okay. Okay. When you sign the card, you sign this one twice. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I guess people react differently to stuff. This whole time you just you, you, you find yourself not being able to believe it. But not, not once have you showed any, any anger or disgust, especially since you inserted into your children's lives. That that bothers me. Not too often I get to see good things at work. I saw that video of your son, it impacted me. And through all of this, your, your, your children really haven't been a concern to me. That's all I'm getting. 
it's unfortunate because they definitely deserve a better than what you're giving them. And I hope they get it. I hope they do. They deserve a lot more than what they're getting. I, I, I wish I would have known them. Definitely under different circumstances. You know? Um, well, I'm just getting my work. That's what you do. Director reflected uh, people's 81 was placed for the jury. He had a copy of the transcript.